Yo, what's poppin'? It's the Hyphenate, and welcome to my studio. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how I record my beat making videos. I'm gonna show you guys the lighting, the audio, and the video equipment that I use, as well as the software, and I'm gonna touch base on how I use this gear and why. Now, keep in mind that the gear I use is a little expensive, though you can make beat making videos on a budget friendly setup. So first, I'm just going to go over all the gear that I'm using, and then I'll break down how I'm using them. All right, so here I have the Sennheiser ME66 shotgun microphone, and I have it on a stand, and this is pointing at one of my main audio monitors, and it's capturing the audio of the beat. My primary audio monitors or speakers are the Yamaha HS8. All right, so the Sennheiser mic uses XLR, and it is powered by battery. It doesn't need phantom power, though it can operate on phantom power, but I'm using it on a battery. So when I have the switch on, then I have an XLR coming out, and it's going to a 3.5 millimeter input here. Now, this 3.5 millimeter jack is going into the Hollyland Lark 150 transmitter. This is one of two transmitters for the wireless microphone system that I use that is the Lark 150. So I have transmitter here. The other transmitter, is actually on me. So right here, I have a lavalier mic that's actually transferring my audio to the receiver. So we have the shotgun mic and we have my audio being split into two separate channels, one on the left, one on the right, and they're both going into this receiver here. So this is the receiver for the Lark 150 setup. This allows me to have two systems going in together. And then this is going plugged in directly into my camera. I'm using the Sony A7S III to actually capture the video and the Lark 150 is transferring the audio from the two wireless transmitters into the camera directly. So when I'm making my beats and I'm talking to the camera, I'm here on this chair and then facing the computer, the keyboard, or towards the camera. I do have the shotgun mic here on this stand pointing at the monitor. And again, it's a wireless setup, so I don't have any wires running across. And then here I have a tripod, the iFootage tripod that holds my A7S III. And then I do have a heavy duty light stand, which is holding my Aperture LS60X light. And then I have that at a 5600 Kelvin temperature, though the light is by color and I can actually change it to any color temperature. I choose to go 5600 Kelvin. And it is being powered by a V-mount battery, a rechargeable battery so that I don't have to worry about any cables. And now for a modifier on the light so that it makes it more soft, so it's not a harsh straight light from the light to my face, I'm using the Aperture Lantern. Now this is actually really dope. It's super, super soft, and it does wrap the light around very nicely. Now to touch a little bit more on the settings of my lighting here, this is the only lighting source in the room, so all the house lights are turned off. I only use this light, and this big, huge modifier softens the light pretty evenly on me. It does have some shadows on me because it's a single source, but it's very pleasing and has a nice pop. The Aperture LS60X light that I'm using is actually pretty powerful and can get really bright. Here, I'm actually using it only at 5% output power. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I'm using the Sony a7S III camera. For the lens, I'm using the Samyang 24mm f1.8 autofocus lens. It's a new lens for Sony. It's awesome, actually. Works really well. And then on the end of the lens, I actually have a diffusion filter. I have the Tiffin Black Pro Mist with the 1 8 diffusion. Now that diffuser actually helps to soften the image slightly. It actually softens skin and blemishes as well as also softens highlights. It's very pleasing and it looks really great for YouTube videos. And then here, in order for me to see myself, I do have the flip screen on the A7S III, but it is kind of small. So I actually use the Andy Cine C7, which is a seven inch monitor to be able to see myself. Now, when it comes to shooting video, I really like shooting in 24 frames per second. That's the cinematic look. I don't like shooting in 30 frames or 60 frames. 24p is the way I go. So I'm shooting here 24 frames per second, shutter speed 1 50th of a second. And I have the white balance on the camera set to daylight to match the color temperature of the light. Now, when it comes to the actual software to make beats, there are many different DAWs out there, digital audio workstations, and you can use pretty much any of them to get the same result, really. But my personal choice is Cubase Pro 11. Now, for my MIDI keyboard, I use the Native Instruments Complete Control Mark II 49 key. They do have various sizes available with more or less keys, but I find this one to be perfect for my desk. Now, here's the audio interface that I use. It's the Solid State Logic SSL2 Plus. Works incredible. 
And underneath that, you can see that I do have a compressor. Now that's used for when I actually do recording vocals. So when I'm making beats, that's not in use. Now for acoustic treatment, I use the RLX Studio Foam as well as the RLX Pro Panels. And I have various sizes and they wrap around the entire studio. This helps to minimize reflections and just really makes the audio quality so much better in here. Now when recording the video of my be making videos, the camera is over here pointing in this direction. So it gets this wall in the background. Now this is all pretty much black charcoal gray and it does have some studio foam that has some nice texture to it. But in order to give it some more pop, I use an RGB LED light here on the floor, a small battery powered light that actually points upwards on a little mini tripod and it's actually giving it some pop, some character in this video. So that way on video, I stand out and I pop out separating from the background. This is the G1S RGB Pixel and it's very affordable and I'd have it on this little plastic tripod with a little ball head so I'm easily able to put it on the floor pointing upwards. Now when it comes to recording the audio you're probably wondering why I have the shotgun mic pointed here when I already have a lav mic on me as well as I have sounds coming into the computer I could just capture my screen and the audio of the beat making process on the computer. Now that's something you can definitely do but the reason I don't do that is because then you're capturing a higher quality sound. I actually do this purposely to kind of degrade my audio. So that way when I actually put up my beat making videos and you're hearing all the individual pieces, the kicks, the snares, hi-hats, the piano, pretty much any instrument or any piece that I'm actually making, you're not getting the full quality audio. And that way people can't really, I mean they can, they can rip my audio and they can sample it and make beats out of it, but you're getting a degraded version. Now it still sounds really good to the ear, so if you're watching it on your phone or you're even on a computer with some pretty decent speakers, it's still going to sound pretty good, but you're getting a recording of a speaker playing the beat. And then with the algorithm and the compression on YouTube, the audio quality is actually kind of degrading more. So you're getting like MP3 style quality. So you're getting even more downgraded. So really it's kind of like my way to make it harder for people to put out quality audio using my audio. Now, as I mentioned earlier, for the audio, I'm actually capturing with the Lark 150, which is a dual wireless system setup. So I have the receiver here capturing my voice on this transmitter, and then the shotgun mic is picking up this audio onto this transmitter, and they're both being sent to this one receiver, which is going directly into the camera. Now, I have it set up in stereo mode. So my audio source is going to one speaker, the mic audio source is going to the other speaker. The reason I have two audio sources going to different channels is so that way I have more flexibility when it comes to editing. Now when I'm actually in the editing process, I can separate those two different channels and make them both be separate channels, both going to left and right signals. That way I can actually mix them a little bit better. So I can isolate my voice, isolate the beat process and actually have them not clashing with each other, but I'm able to make the beat part a little bit clearer, more loud, same with my voice, and then I can mix them together where it fits very smoothly and blends very nicely. Now there's a lot going on here. Lighting, audio, different sources, and it takes time to make sure that you get the right audio levels, the right output power, etc. So once you kind of have the full setup, then you can finally adjust things and tweak them, make sure that everything is recording properly, nothing's peaking on the lighting side, nothing's overexposed. Once all that's done, then you can make your beat, record the video, and then edit the video. Now, if you're interested in knowing how I edit my videos, then I will do another video on that and I'll break down the full process. Now, again, this is a very different way on how I do be making videos compared to most people. Most people do it a different way, probably a little bit more simple, but this is how I like to do it because it gives me the control in my style as well as making sure that my audio is at a very high level while also kind of maintaining some security on the quality of the audio that people can rip from the video. So there you guys have it. That's how I record my beat making videos in my studio. If you guys are interested in any of the gear that I use, I have links in the description for all the gear that I use for making beats, for recording the video, for capturing the audio, for lighting, etc. I have links in the description where you can purchase them. It doesn't change the price that you get it at, but it does help this channel. Please make sure to drop a like on this video, drop a comment below if you have any questions, and please make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming soon. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.